Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folarin. We're in a, an unfortunate season of floods, but then again, the scientists, uh, uh, the researchers, they tell us that it isn't actually unexpected. Uh, I'm talking about the floods in Borono and um, the toll on life and displacements of families um, has been remarkable, to put it that way for now. Uh, one, one has to be careful about going into numbers. Okay, so w w to sort of understand it a bit better, since, number one, this is its season, the season of heavy rains, the seasons of floods, um, but the fact that the um, Aladam uh, in Borono uh, has, mm, has been breached, yes, that's the, that's the expression, uh, has been breached by the sheer intensity of um, the rainfall, uh, and this has brought on, you know, attendant um, uh, heartbreaks uh, across the state and uh, its environments. Uh, we, we, we're speaking with um, some experts. Uh, we've, we've called on the uh, on uh, NISA, Nigerian uh, Hydrological Services Agency, and uh, speaking with us from there this morning uh, through our Abuja studio is uh, Mr. Femi Bejide. Mr. Femi Bejide is uh, Director, Operational Hydrology. A fine morning to you, Mr. Bejide. Thank you very much. Good morning for having me. Yes. Okay. Um, this, what has happened uh, over in Maiduguri town, where it is reported that somewhere in the region of 40% of you know, the, um, of, the, of uh, Maiduguri is under uh, water. Uh, I've been reading that, pathetic as it may be, it's not entirely unexpected uh, that there would be floods. It's just that the extent uh, of the floods is perhaps what has caught um, maybe, can I say, Nisa uh, napping. Has indeed anybody been caught napping in all of this? Did you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can okay. hear you now. Now you can hear me. I, I, was, yes. I was just going... Okay. Uh, so um, what the question I had asked is that even though we've been hearing that the floods were actually expected, this is its season. In fact, there had been advisories, there had been warnings uh, that people should do everything they could to move uh, out of the channels. Um, but the extent... Was the extent of it surprising? And the breach of the, uh, one doesn't know how to present it now, I mean to pronounce it now, the Aladam, but A-L-A, A-L-A, I believe is the spelling, that, that dam. Yes, um, loud dam. Yes, it, it, uh, we, we hear that its channel uh, has been breached, uh, which means damaged. Um, is that the primary cause of this devastation, or... Even if it hadn't been breached, might it have been fit for purpose, the dam? In other words, is the dam in any way blamable for this, um, uh, for, for this occurrence? Yes, uh, the situation we have at hand in Lao Dam in Bono is, um, though the dam, the integrity of the dam, for some time now, over 15 years, is, uh, the integrity is a little bit questionable. But uh, apart from that, the recent and current flooding there is due to excessive rain. And this rain uh, coming down from Mandara Hills, Mandara Hills, coming, flowing down to Sambisa Forest. And actually, Sambisa Forest slowed it down a little before okay. getting to the dam. So the dam is, is a small dam. The capacity cannot contain such an amount of water coming to it. So that is what caused the dam um, uh, failure. And um, all this is just... Um, it's 
due to the excessive rain, actually. Yes. And uh, yes. for us in NISA, we're supposed to monitor that place, actually. But because, of course, anybody in Nigeria now, if you hear something like Sambisa Forest, everybody know what comes to people's mind, security threats and things like that. These are the reasons why that have not been able to be adequate because of the security challenge around that place. And due to the excessive rain, uncontrolled, coming to this small dam, which has a technical issue already on ground. So all this necessitated what is currently happening now. Mm. Well, 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 thank you for that um, uh, brief overview. Um, it, it, it almost looks like, um, as you said, excessive rains, um, because I was going to ask that even if we had known that um, the rains were going to be, you know, as heavy as they have been, was there very much that we could have done? Now, you said that it has actually been observed, noted, that um, the Alao Dam, its integrity was not all that it, had could, that it could be over the past 15 years or so. Um, mm. What could have been done? Um, because the, it, it's like we've been reprieved, you know, we Nigerians are prayerful people. Uh, could it be that the power of prayers have sort of held us on over the past decade and a half that it has been known that this has been the case? Now, you said Sambisa Forest slowed down the onslaught of the floods, and that relates to something else that you experts talk about, the, the dangers of deforestation and uh, uh, places being yeah. built up that, were, that shouldn't have been built up uh, Sambisa Forest has proved that in particular. Um, what, what, what do we do now after the immediate concern? As we all know, the president has ordered emergency you know, uh, attention to the area from all the relevant agencies. But what do we do beyond this? Because we hear that even a zoo in the center of, uh, of town uh, has been flooded. Uh, a correctional center you know, has been flooded and um, this has led to, it is thought, escape, escapees from um, those institutions. So what, what do we do after this? I mean, we've been managing, as it were, for the past 15 years. So what, in the impression of uh, NISA, uh, needs to be done urgently? Since emergencies don't usually, or do they, uh, sound advance notice of the occurrence? Yes, uh for us at NISA, Nigeria Geological Services Agency, we are charged with responsibility of to, uh, to monitor the nation's uh, water. I can hear you. Please continue. Nation's water resources. And the nation's water resources. So for, for us, like uh, my DG is uh, unavoidably absent here today. Because yes. it's on another, uh, in a meeting, because okay. of this flood, as you will recall, the vice president... Okay, that's uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Umaru Ibrahim Mohammed. Yes, it's already, by tomorrow, they will be in, uh, in uh, Borono to mm -hmm. assess uh, what is on ground and what happens. So, but in immediate measures now is that a buffer, what is what you call a buffer dam, small, small earth dams that needed to be constructed so that in case of this kind of uh, scenario, the water can be channeled to such uh, buffer dams. So the same thing is this is just uh, precipitation flooding, flash flooding. There is still river flooding, which is... Um, with the major rivers we have in Nigeria, River Niger, and River Benue. And the waters that are coming from those, uh, entering Nigeria, uh, from those rivers, are also, the water level are, is increasing. And uh, we have, uh, about two weeks ago, NISA issued a red alert to the nation. And also, he, and uh, ensured that the dam management along that uh, River Niger, Kanji Dam, and uh, Jeba Dam, were, they were in, adequately informed. But all what we are seeing now is rain, 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 precipitation, excessive rain within a short time. That is what is causing all this flooding. But temporary measures is to just create some... Uh, 
uh, uh, hello, are, are you, uh, okay, you were looking at the pictures, I imagine. Those are indeed uh, pictures of the vice president um, visiting uh, the scene of the dam. So as you were saying, um, for a number of reasons, the dam, the Alao Dam, was overwhelmed. Um, it, you know, this is um, probably not the time for blaming or anything like that, but um, I don't know. The, the maintenance culture, uh, Nigeria uh, can be famous or infamous uh, for its maintenance it's not so culture. Yes. So, sorry, please continue. Yes. So in the month of August, just the last uh, previous month, 29 states have been affected and 154 local governments also have been uh, affected. And according to NEMA, what they have issued out already, 661,201 persons have been affected and uh, we have 115,265 acres of farmland have also been lost. So when we look at all this and we see that ideological services plays a major role in national security, as you have also rightly said just now, that correctional centers are also being flooded and you know the implication of that when inmates because of flooding when there is a jailbreak and they escape that's why we keep on saying that ideological services play a pivot and important role in national security and that's why in NISA we prevent whereas in NEMA NEMA also kills and we know that prevention is better than cure so, national attention, federal resources should be adequately provided for a NISA to be able to carry out its mandate so that all these things can be forestalled. Okay, yeah, I, I hear that. Um, I wonder if there's an element of um, a sort of a gentle complaint there. Um, that because the Lord has been merciful over all this time when we didn't have a, a catastrophe on our hands, um, might we have gotten complacent? You just said that NISA, you know, uh, uh, prevents and, um, you know, the emergency, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the emergency yes. agency itself, what it does is that it swings into rescue mode. Um, mm. I was talking about our attitude, which is an arguable point, uh, to maintenance. Now, if all that NISA, for instance, uh, has been speaking about and been recommending about, about talking about, about explaining that this needs to be done, uh, I imagine that there's precious little that it can do if, you know, quality attention is not given to its uh, submissions. Is, is there that aspect, too, that, look, we have the scientists, the technical people, we have the equipment, we have the wherewithal to be able to predict these things, but we also do have recommendations which might not have gotten all the attention that uh, it requires, right, leading up to here. Yes, you are right. Like now, when I roll out uh, the figures of, uh, from NEMA, Nigeria Emergency yes. Management Agency, you see, in that figure, you didn't even see also the loss of ideological, vital ideological equipments. Because when flood ravages, it also destroys our equipments installed to measure such things. And they are also national assets. So what we are trying to say that the loss from the flood is so enormous. And these things occur year in, year out, that a national attention and in intervention has to be taken place, have to be uh, put in place to be able to address this holistically. This morning, at the Nigerian Television Authority, we hear that the, through the vice uh, president, that the, the present government is going to uh, pay full attention to flooding in a bit to see the at least to minimize the effect of flooding that's a a great uh, 
way to go, and that's also is we bring a renewed hope for the people because mm. paying attention to flooding is paying attention to national security. You know, the work of NISA, we are just like uh, immigration. We are just like a uh, custom. We are water custom. We are water immigration. Because with this water coming in, apart from the rain, water coming in through, uh, uh, through River Niger to Nigeria is a transboundary river. That is a river that passes through about nine countries before ending up in Nigeria. River Beni also is a transboundary river coming from Cameroon, ending up in Nigeria. All waters of these rivers passing through this country, they are coming into Nigeria. That's what every Nigerian should understand, every people should understand. Nigeria is a receiver, a big basin, receiving all these waters. And because of the large land mass area of Nigeria, when we talk about rain also, Nigeria also receives a large share of water through, uh, through rain, rainfall. So from the river on the right, from the river on the left, and from above also, water from God, all in this same country, Nigeria. So much water, so much water, all going through Nigeria into the Atlantic Ocean. So Nigeria needs now adequately to see how this water is properly managed and channeled so that it will not cause devastation uh, and not uh, cause a lot of things that we are experiencing year in, year out. So there is need for ch channelization. There is need for building of buffer dams. There is need for hydrological equipment to be, to be installed as strategic uh, rivers and tributaries to mo monitor and to measure so that we will be, will be able to adequately predict and also manage the water resources of Nigeria. As Indeed. a matter of truth, most, and, and about 70% of all this water coming in from River Benue, from River Niger, and from Abo, from God, is lost into Atlantic Ocean. And not only lost alone, leaving a lot of devastation. Eh, upon the lives of the Nigerians. So Indeed. I think it is time to renew the hope of the people that when it is rainy season is coming, people will have hope that their houses, their properties, their farmlands will still be safe after the rainy season. Because right now, this is a catastrophe. Um, Yes. It goes without saying. We can see the pictures. It's coinciding with, you know, harvest season for, um, you know, uh, quite yes. a number of crops. All of that is uh, lost now. But what, um, I, I guess the question one wants to ask is that um, many people this morning on this program will be hearing about your agency, important as it is, uh, Nigeria Hydrological um, uh, services agency services agency and you've just said to us nice. that among other things you're supposed to be monitoring our water resources could you give me a very brief um sort of explanation as to the crucial nature of your agency and you uh, especially as you yourself you're the director of operational hydrology it means it probably goes beyond just being in the office uh, operational hydrology now first of all if you could start from that part about explaining uh, explaining about our, our water resources because our that which is a gift to us a resource to us is now what is um uh, causing all of these problems probably because um we are not we don't have the wherewithal to manage it to the utmost um, capacity so when, when we talk about groundwater for example okay yeah go ahead sir yes Hydrological services play a vital role in national security and nation's development. As a matter of fact, hydrological service is a renewed hope agenda in the sense that if you look at the diversity nature of uh, flooding, not only in Nigeria, all over the world globally, is a climate change effect. So 
And uh, every year, you see the hope of so many people, farmers, ordinary people in the villages, in the local governments, being damaged, being lost, being shattered. So to renew their hope, attention to flooding is one of the major critical role of these governments. And these governments have also promised, and they are also into, that's why the vice president was in Borono State, because right. it is a major factor in renewed hope. Nigeria is over 200 million people, and majority as, as of the population speaking, of Nigeria the vice, that's are, the vice are president farmers. In that multicolored shirt, as you were speaking, just to sort of uh, identify yes. him for people. Ye uh -huh. Yes. So, and um, hydrological services to prevent this in water security. We are there providing water security because water supply, ensuring adequate water supply for drinking and agriculture and industry. In also flood and drought, we predict as a matter of truth, by February, March, our annual flood outlook is, is released to the whole nation to see that this is how the flood in Nigeria this year will look like. We are also into drought, forecasting drought, annual drought outlook. Also, Nigeria services, uh, hydrological services also play a critical role in food security because water is vital to agriculture through irrigation management, through water allocation. We also play a part in food security. In economic uh, security, hydropower generation, water transportation, tourism and recreation. This is how NISA also play a part in economic security. What of environmental security, climate change adaptation, understanding and mitigating climate impact on water resources, uh, water related disasters, risk reduction. This is our mandate. This is what we have been doing. Eh? We also contribute in what? In environmental security and also strategic security, like you have just mentioned, and I keep on repeating it. Flooding in the prison, in the, our correctional services eh? Eh? centers me, is a threat to security. What, watch it now. We are talking, we are, people have already been talking about war, uh, water wars. I told about River Niger passing through nine countries into Nigeria. If any country in upstream decided to put a, you know, a, a contaminate that river, as it enters Nigeria, we are taking it, people will die. Chemical yes. weapons. That's why in our agency, we have hydrogeophysics department, and we have also where we use isotope hydrology to check all these things. So we are just like water immigration, water um, customs, mm. checking the water coming to the country and mm -hmm. also monitoring it and also making sure that the water is not contaminated and also not only surface water alone, also ground water. Yes, because so I was going to come to that. NISA. Ground water. So these are uh, the uh, critical uh, role. Yes. That's where it's we talk about roles. Because NISA all this can, Yes. All these contamination aspects that you're talking about. Um, maybe boreholes will be safe, I'm guessing, you can explain, uh, but wells, for instance, if this is a flood, uh, all of those wells would, you know, uh, possibly have been polluted by now by all this kind of water. Uh, explain that part to us, um, the safety, when this flood would have receded, and how long is it going to take for all of this to recede? Yes. All these things also depends on the on on groundwater, and that takes us also to groundwater. It's also the mandate of Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency (NISA). Now, take a let me take a classical example of uh, Jigawa State. Jigawa okay. State is almost on a flat plain. We call it flat plain. That means there is no much so much gradients, no slope in a layman's language. So when it rains now. The water, that is what we call runoff. Yeah, when there is a slope, the water begins to flow down here and there. But in Jigawa State, the runoff is so little because the ground is relatively flat. So okay. what happens is that when, when it rains, 
there is what you call infiltration. That means water going down into the ground, forming part of the ground water or the ground water. But there is a saturation level. That means a level that the ground also have already received enough water or like a foam is soaked already. It can't take more. So any water that is coming out in form of rain will not be going to be flowing over land. So, and if the rain persists and the ground water is already saturated, it cannot take more. Then, what do you expect? Flooding. So, that's mm. a classical case of Jigawa states. But in most other states, most of the state of Nigeria, they are not like that. They are already uh, you know, in, uh, in, inclined. So, the water run freely. And yes. uh, the trees and the vegetation that are supposed to have also slowed the speed down have been cut down for, you know, household use, deforestation, yes. make it easier again. So by the time it will rush down to people's houses, and again, most of these houses in the village are mud houses. So these are a lot of things eh, that, is, that causes all what we are seeing and the, the devastations. So, but for the groundwater, we have uh, the water coming in, and like the surface water, also we, is this case also in the groundwater. We have transboundary groundwater, water yeah. that okay. even transverse about seven, ten countries before coming to Nigeria under the ground. So if one point is contaminated, of course it will flow down. So that's mm. why NICER, we have critical hydrological in, uh, facilities that we install in all these uh, major uh, rivers and their tributaries, although not enough, but at least sufficient. Like this flood now, we, sometimes we record a lot of loss. Not only okay. loss of life, not only loss of properties, but also loss of equipment, which are national assets. To flood which now in. have to be So we have replaced. to look for, yes, we have to look for billions of naira to get this equipment to be, to, to be replaced. That's why I said mm. that uh, uh, intervention is very, very necessary. Okay. Now, uh, uh, technology has improved that we can use drones. So we need to also okay. to upscale and get to such levels. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell you what, Mr. Bijili, uh, we'll take a break now. Please. <laughs> Okay, um, welcome back, and um, our guest this morning is Mr. Femi Bejide, Director of Operational Hydrology. Um, he's standing in for, you know, the Director General, Mr. Umar Ibrahim Mohammed, who is unavoidably uh, away, as he told us at the top of the program. Now, you've explained these things, um, a lot of these aspects to us, and... Um, Indeed, in a sort of microcosm, the work of uh, uh, NISA. The qu a, a equipment that has been compromised, damaged, washed away, whatever, that's going to need replacement. Uh, but thank God, as you just said, as we were going out, that, well, nowadays, uh, the nature, the lie of the ground is such that drones can sort of stand in, uh, but there's, it's, that's not going to be as effective, probably, as installed uh, features uh, that you were relying upon before. Thank God for the drones, but you probably still need all of those for monitoring. But the one thing I wanted to sort of clear is that uh, portable water now, is that compromised? Because there still is the need for drinking water, for cooking, for doing all the other things, uh, especially in the area of operation. Okay, I, I, I can figure that um, you didn't hear me. Uh, I, I, I had just said, and I'll sort of repeat myself, uh, I, I, I had just said, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm, going to, I'm about yeah, to repeat myself. You, now. you can hear me now. Okay. So I, I, I was, first of all, how long is it going to take for normalcy uh, to return? That is to say, for the waters to have sufficiently drained. And in the meantime, you know, we've spoken about what, there's the zoo in the center of, um, uh, of uh, the capital of Borono State. Uh, 
reptiles have escaped, snakes, you know, crocodiles, uh, alligators, those have escaped creating their own kind of danger. But from the health perspective, uh, how, how bad is it? Since people need water to drink, and we are trying to move people to higher ground, and thank you, by the way, for that explanation about the terrain. Uh, I think uh, uh, Jigawa, for example, you compared with other areas. And uh, I, as you were speaking, I was just imagining the pitch of a roof, a flat roof, uh, the way it will drain, as opposed to one that has a very steep pitch. So I could sort of relate a lot that you were saying to those uh, situations. But how, uh, how, how, how desperate is the situation uh, from the point of view of, we've talked about agriculture, that is very, very clear, but even the health aspect in court. Yes. Please go ahead, sir, if you, if you heard me well. Yeah, the health... The health aspects, of course, like we said, that after every flooding and then the waters have receded, of course, you see a lot of um, outbreak of some uh, waterborne diseases. It's normal. Yes. Yeah. So, but what uh, we do, that's why NEMA is charged with that responsibility to cater for the people, evacuate the people relocate the people, take them to an island and a safe place, and also water at that point in time, because water has passed through unusual places, it has been contaminated. The quality of the water has been compromised by, that in, by flooding incidents. It will take some few days. Reports that are reaching us, even from Borono now, is that the water's in Borono, the flood there is the flood water is receding, as I'm speaking to you now. So sometimes, couple of days, it uh, the water will recede, will have gone underground and also overflow and move down, you know, to the lower part, the downstream. So health issues is uh, is expected. Because people have, that's why one of the mandates of NEMA also, and what they are doing is they also provide portable drinking water for their people. Because uh, if they have to drink this flood water, it will cause a lot of uh, waterborne diseases. So that is also taken into consideration, and NEMA is also doing just that. But for us, like I said, our equipment is a nas national asset, critical national asset, and have to be uh, protected and uh, taken care of because it is very, uh, the data we are collecting is very, very important to the security of the nation. And the flood we are trying to prevent and mitigate is also very, very important to renewed hope of the people. Yes. So, yes. very, very important. Well, as you were saying, these are pictures, for instance, of where it isn't as bad, uh, which would, you know, explain, which would be illustrating what you're saying, that there are reports that uh, the floods are beginning to uh, recede. Uh, we're not out of an emergency now. yet, but we just saw uh, a street there where at least the tarmac was showing. Um, uh, in fact, I think it was yesterday or day before, we saw where the water level uh, had actually met up with the, uh, roof, yeah. the roofs of some houses. So that shows how bad. I mean, well, by the way, all of this water is receding because it's like its path was um, disturbed, but it was on the way to the uh, ocean, right? Yes. It, it was Through on its states way. and local governments in Nigeria. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's why so that um, is very very important to note and um what you you gave a figure of uh, 29 states being uh, affected and so many hundreds yes. of uh, local government so, areas so far so far and this water as we should know is flowing down downstream coming down to the middle belt of of the of the country and the local jar and still going down through a number mm. emo down to the creek the delta 
entering yes. into Bielsa to River State and into the Atlantic Ocean. Wow. So, wow. so all these states have to prepare. This, I like I said, is, is caused by rain. But the river flooding is not the one we are experiencing now. Because oh. as, of, as of this morning in Lokoja, the water level is rising already. And as okay, so Jidere Bode. So the, the, there's a distinction. There you just pointed out a distinction that is important for the people to know that. Uh, there are, there's the rain aspect to the floods. Uh, and there's also the... And the river uh, aspect, river flooding. And, and that so itself is... Nigerians need to know this. Yes. Uh, that itself is caused by the rain, isn't it? Uh, well, what will cause river banks? All work? this one we are seeing is flash flooding is caused by the rain. Okay. The rains accentuate. And, and then you yes. had also spoken earlier about um, the... Um, what um, River the, flooding. Yes. And um, also this new technology that Nigerians are beginning to learn, um, uh, uh, global warming, that all of this has... Global warming, has yes. With, with uh, global, global warming, warming, climate change, they are, the effect of it is flood, floodings and what, and desertification, drought. If outside the country you find cases like uh, hurricane, Agi, all those kind of things. The same thing also is happening in Nigeria. But at least, thank God, we don't have, um, we don't usually hear of hurricanes, uh, typhoons, and that yes. kind of, a, those kind of, we don't hear yeah. about that in Nigeria. Uh, but where you do hear about those ones, unfortunately for them, they also have their own floodings. Um, even in the U.S., yes. in the U.K., from time to time, we hear about, you know, Sometimes now, sure. Y y y you were saying that the immediate cause of what we are experiencing now is uh, the the rains uh, throwing in with with all of um, the you know the the new uh, all of these phenomena that you're talking about. Um, so this is just because of the rains. So we actually have to keep our fingers crossed that as we are waiting for it to recede, that the rains don't resume. Uh, because nature, nature is what it is. Uh, one just is banking, is sort of hoping against hope that in the midst of all of this, as it is draining, the, the rains don't, the rains that cause this particular situation uh, don't suddenly, you know, uh, return. Because yes, if they do, we should not keep our fingers crossed. Because if we keep our fingers crossed, we will not do anything. This is time to do something and to do it very fast. So, I hear you. Nigerians, a lot is a red alert. We should not keep our fingers crossed. We should move from the flood plain. We should move from the flood plain. We should move from the flood plain. We should clear the drainages. We should be alert, shine our eyes. We should be alert to see the river and the streams along our villages. Should, if they are rising, it's already natural sensitization for us. So locals are supposed to know this. After this flooding of this year, I expect every Nigerians now to know and to understand better that at least generally there are two types of flooding let us say river flooding and and rain flooding in a layman's language rain yeah. water like uh, one uh, singer have said send us the rain send us the rain god has <laughs> sent the rain let us also nigerians manage this gift that god is giving to us there are many countries that there is no rain so exactly. we have much rain. Let us now see how to impound this rain, how to build dams, buffer dams, earth mm -hmm. dams, how to procure national ideological uh, equipment and place it in our rivers and monitor it. And when it is dry season, to release it for the farmers also to, to, have, to have water for the dry season farming. That's why the role of 
ideological services is very, very key, not only to renew up agenda, but also to national security. Let us get to a point that we say plenty water, flood, but no life loss, no, not, no, no, no farmland damage. Yes, that's where we are going. It's a renewed hope, and we are taking a, a step further gradually. Indeed. But just, just as you said, um, you, you had said that rather from, uh, rather than um, my expression of keeping our fingers crossed, no, no, just uncross those fingers and put them to work. Uh, I get what you're saying. Yes. That uh, put, your, put the hands to work, metaphorically speaking again, uh, just as the crossing of the fingers was a, a metaphorical uh, a expression. Um, but it's also been pointed out that at the moment, when we are in the midst of the crisis, Orders have been given by the presidency, by the president, uh, for corrective measures to be taken. But we can't do anything in the situation that we're in. We're going to have to wait for the floods to recede, and you have said so, that you hope that in the aftermath of this, um, we won't depend as much on what has sustained us for the past uh, 15 years, when you were speaking about the um, uh, Alao Dam, uh, that people will swing to work and government itself will find it um, the resolution to, 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 to do the needful in terms of um, maintenance work on those dams. Because you said additional dams, buffer dams need to be made. I don't know if, it is that, if that's the way dams work. Uh, do we need to, uh, when they talk about strengthening dams, is it just a matter of heightening them or is it just the breaches? Because before even these dams were constructed, I would imagine that all sorts of feasibility studies would have been taken with agencies like yours involved, uh, so we know what the dimensions of the dam were supposed to be. Uh, is there a need for a review of all those parameters, or is it other forces that have been ignored that are now causing the uh, stress that we see on our water resources systems? Yes. Um Actually, why uh, the last administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, a flood um, experts were gathered together from all um, water sector and a national, um, national committee on flood mitigation was set up. And uh, by the time that administration is winding up, a report was written and submitted. But the uh, lifespan of the admission expired. But this new administration picked it up. Picked it up. And uh, currently, as I'm talking, the vice president is the, is the one overseeing that report now given to him. They have looked at it. And that's why I said it's a renewed hope. Even for us, also, it's a renewed hope. At least it's, it has been taken up. And recommendations are there. If I'm not mistaken, about uh, nine or ten dams were preferred to be built. And as ideological equipment to be, to be supplied to our agency, because this administration now knows the importance and the critical role ideological services played, not only in the renewed open agenda, like I said earlier, but also in national security. Very, very important. So that's why you see the vice president already in uh, yes. Bruno State. People will say, oh, maybe because he's from that state. No, he's moving on to the other states also. Like I said, my director general, Umar Ibrahim Mohammed, also with other uh, professors, will be also be going to Bruno tomorrow. This is because of the critical role that this administration is placing on mitigation to flooding. So yeah. intervention is needed. Let Indeed. also ordinary Nigerians, also everybody, like I said, flooding is a national issue. And I have said flooding also can cause eh, a national security issue. So everybody has their role to play. NIMET, NISA, NEMA, federal government, state government, legislators, 
National Assembly, everybody, common Nigerians, farmers, now they are knowing they have their role to play. Mm -hmm. So let mm -hmm. everyone play their role. And in a few years' time, I believe by the time the first tenor of this administration will be winding up, flood will not be a major issue in Nigeria. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I've been talking, you have also want to draw me intentionally. I refuse to comment on that. You are drawing me towards uh, water. Is not God that provides this water. Nigeria, Nigeria, pray. Of course, not only a director of opportunity ideology, I'm also a pastor, but I intentionally not want to go there. But we thank God, Nigeria prays, and I let you know on this television that the prayers of Nigeria and being answered by God is what has made Nigeria to have been overwhelmed by flood before now. Before, okay, because if you know the state of the nation and the state of our equipment and things like that, and the overwhelming water that is coming, we are, will have been washed away if it's not the Lord that has been on our side. So Indeed. God is helping Nigeria, and we are moving forward. We will soon get over all these things gradually. There is hope, and a renewed hope for Nigeria. Indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bejide. Uh, we we'll leave it. A fine compromise there. Um, you wanting to stay professional, and, you know, as a man of science, uh, and, but you've, we've, we've had a, a fine mix of it. Thank you very much for coming along and airing some of these uh, issues with us. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we've been speaking with Mr. Femi Bejide, who is the Director of Operational uh, Hydrology at uh, uh, NISA, and he's, he's studying uh, admirably, even if I'm allowed to say so, for the DG uh, Umar Ibrahim Mohammed of uh, the Nigeria uh, Hydrological Services Agency. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bejide. Okay, so we're going Thank to you for to having me. Indeed. We're going to have to leave it there. Uh, do please join us tomorrow for a fresh topic. Uh, I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.